So in today's video, I'm going to answer a common question I get, which is what is the difference between ETFs, also known as exchange traded funds and index funds? Hey everyone, welcome to Clever Girl Finance TV. My name is Bola Shokumbi. I'm the founder and CEO of Clever Girl Finance, and I'm also the author of the book, Learn How Investing Works, Grow Your Money. So a lot of people ask me this question because they've heard that ETFs and index funds are great low cost options to invest in, and they're typically trying to decide which one is the better option for them. So let's talk about it. So first of all, both ETFs and index funds are an aggregation of stocks, bonds, and other securities depending on the ETF or index fund that mimic an underlying index. So for example, an ETF or index fund could mimic or track the S&P 500 index. And the S&P 500 index is the 500 largest publicly traded companies in the US. So if you decide to purchase an ETF or index fund that tracks the S&P 500, you are essentially investing in all 500 companies in the S&P 500 based on the ETF or index fund you choose along with other investors. Keep in mind that ETFs and index funds are different from mutual funds in the sense that mutual funds are usually professionally managed. And this professional management is based on a strategy that is put together by a fund manager on how the money that is pulled together for that mutual fund is going to be invested in the stock market. And so as a result of this professional management, mutual funds typically come with higher fees. So now that we know what ETFs are and we know what index funds are, let's first talk about their similarities and then get into their differences. So both ETFs and index funds are similar in that they both offer broad diversification, they are both low cost because they are passively managed, and they have both shown to perform well consistently over the long term. With that being said, however, ETFs and index funds do have their differences. So let's talk about what these differences are. So difference number one, minimum investment requirements. So ETFs have been known to have the lowest investment requirements, which makes it easier for someone who is getting started with investing and only has a small amount to actually start investing. However, in today's day and age, many brokerages and funds are doing away with that minimum requirement. So this is not so much of a difference anymore because you can find a lot of index funds that do not have a minimum requirement out there that you can start investing in with just a small amount. And so while ETFs are known to have the lowest minimum requirements, this is no longer a big deal anymore, but it's still listed at a difference depending on where you go to buy your ETF or index fund. So difference number two, timing of trade. And this is a big difference between ETFs and index funds. And this is basically when and how these investment types, these fund types can be traded throughout the day. So ETFs can be traded at any point during the trading day, just like stocks. However, index funds can only be traded at the end of day, end of the stock market day, and at the end of the stock market day price. For a long-term investor, this timing of trade does not matter because you're buying and holding on to the investment into the foreseeable future. But if you are someone like a day trader who makes purchases or sales based on fluctuations of the stock price throughout the day, then timing of trade may be impactful to you. Difference number three, liquidity. And this is something that is related to the previous difference, which is timing of trade. And this is basically how quickly you can liquefy your investment. And so if you're able to trade your investments throughout the day with an ETF, you can get to liquidity faster than if you are waiting until the end of the day to make the trade with an index fund, which likely will not clear until the next day, depending on your brokerage. Difference number four is tax efficiency. So taxes are triggered whenever an investment is traded for cash. And this trigger is called a taxable event. And if there are profits, then you're going to have to pay taxes. So remember, when you purchase an ETF or an index fund, you are buying into this aggregation of stocks, bonds, or other securities, depending on the ETF or index fund, along with other investors in that ETF or index fund. And so both of these funds, ETFs and index funds, have great tax efficiency. However, ETFs are known to have better tax efficiency, and I will explain why. 
So with an ETF, if an investor wants to redeem their shares in that ETF, those shares are traded on the stock market as an in-kind transaction, which does not trigger a taxable event. And that's why the name is called exchange traded funds. However, with an index fund, if an investor wants to redeem some of their shares, then the index fund itself may need to sell some of those shares for cash in order to give the investor back their money. And this triggers a taxable event that gets passed on to other investors in that index fund. With all of that being said, you are probably wondering, should you buy ETFs or index funds? So personally, I think that for someone like a trader, a day trader who is interested in using advanced investing strategies like margin orders, stop loss orders, limit orders, etc., investing in an ETF might be best for them because that timing of trade, the timing of when the trade happens throughout the day really matters because they track those fluctuations to make their sales and their purchases. However, if you are a long-term investor, index funds might be the right path for you because you are not focused on that timing of trade. Another reason why investing in an ETF might be better for you is if you are investing in a taxable brokerage account or a non-retirement investment account. And this is because since ETFs are known to have better tax efficiency, you may want to leverage them in those taxable accounts. But keep in mind, like I mentioned, both ETFs and index funds have really good tax efficiency and both of them are really great low cost investment options for a portfolio, especially because of the broad diversification they offer, the low cost, like I mentioned, and the fact that they have both been proven to perform well consistently over time. So I hope this video has helped you get a better understanding about ETFs and index funds. And I would love to know whether you invest in ETFs or index funds. So leave a comment below. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you have enjoyed watching, hit the like button below. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and head on over to Instagram at Clever Girl Finance to follow us there. And don't forget to stop by the Clever Girl Finance website. We offer over 30 plus completely free courses to help you as you work at achieving your financial goals. I will talk to you soon.